الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم مبعن اللہم لا سحلہ الا ما جعلت سحلہ و انت تجعل حزنا اذا شئت سحلہ We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts blessing in our sittings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all our sins and bless us with ilm nafiyah wa rizqan tayyibah wa amalan mutaqabilan. Continuing on in our treaties, uh, our explanation of Nawaqt uh, al-Islam by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. We reach the fourth nullifier or thing that negates one's faith where the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala says Arabi'u Man i'taqida Anna ghayra hadi Nabiyyi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Akmalu min hadihi O anna al-hukma Ghayrihi ahsanu min hukmihi Kalladhi yufaddilu Hukma tawaghiti Ala hukmihi Fuhu kafir so the fourth nullifier faith is one that is of great controversy and concern for many of the people in this time and age and it has to do with uh, it has to do with leadership or when someone instead of leadership rather when someone rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this is one of the shubahat that many of the people and unfortunately many of the youth uh, many Muslim youth in many different uh, localities and nations involve themselves and and deeply in this issue and there's no doubt that this is a, an incredibly important issue however everything in its rightful place and in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah and the Aqwal ulama or ijmal ulama, the statements of the scholars, and this is the problem: is most of the people speak about these issues without knowledge, without having studied these issues, without going into depth in these issues, without taking from the ulama, understanding how do the salaf understand these issues, how do we practice these issues, how do we make tatbiq of these issues, how do we make these rulings uh, applicable. So the fourth nullifier, as the Sheikh mentioned, he said, whoever believes that there is guidance more complete than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or that there is legislation better than his legislation, like the person who prefers the legislation of the Tawaghit over his legislation is a disbeliever. So this is the fourth nullifier of faith. And as we mentioned in the beginning, the Shaykh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab mentioned the things that were most, uh, the ten nullifiers of faith that are most, were most common during his time that he observed and that they are some of the greatest things that unfortunately uh, people fall into which negate their faith. So he, sh uh, the evidence for this uh, principle is that the one who holds this belief negates the fact that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Messenger of Allah meaning the person who believes that for example democracy or communism or a capitalist system or whatever whether whether it be an economic or a political system or a political philosophy that it is better or equal to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us in guidance and in his authentic Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then this negates a person's faith uh, this negates the fact the person who holds this belief they negate the fact that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and that his guidance was the best Alayhi Salatu Wasallam because this testimony Muhammad is the messenger of Allah when we make the testimony of faith includes believing in what he has prophesied and acting in a judging acting and judging according to his legislation and adhering to his commands and staying away from what he has prohibited and worshiping Allah according to his way and this is a statement of Shaykh Abdulaziz Raji Hafizullah Ta'ala the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam includes his methodology his minhaj in propagating Islam this includes his methodology of teaching and manners and all the actions sayings and judgments that he made and left for his nation to follow 
And as an aside, Ibn al Qayyim mentions about uh, ta, uh, the term Tawut or Tawagit, which is the plural. Tawut is Mufrid, is singular. What Tawagit is plural, Jem. So Ibn al Qayyim says about the meaning of this statement Tawagit, meaning uh, who, those people who prefer the legislation of the Tawagit over the legislation over the Prophet Sallallahu legislation are disbelievers. Ibn al-Qayyim says, the meaning of Tagut is that it entails either worshiping other than Allah or following or believing or being followed to the extent that it transgresses the prescribed boundaries. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi rahimahullah ta'ala comments, so whoever worships other than Allah, the Almighty, has exceeded the bounds of worship. Therefore, it is the responsibility of everything created to be a slave, a slave of Allah, not worshipped, and to worship Allah alone sincerely. So that's an incredibly important statement of uh, Allama Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullah where he showed us that the rulership belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that our worship is directed only to Allah and that we should realize our position as slaves of Allah, not slaves of the kings, not slaves of the presidents, not slaves of the uh, the party leader or what have you, but rather we're slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that as a slave of Allah, a worshiper of Allah, because worship requires hum being humble, bowing, prostrating to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's what could be more humble than that? Crying to him, supplicating, repenting to him, begging his forgiveness, begging for guidance, begging for him to provide for you. This is worship. And this doesn't happen to any of his, cre his, cre uh, his creatures or his creations. We don't bow before anyone. So anyone who is pleased with being uh, supplicated to or bowed and humbled uh, that people humble themselves before them, then this person fits the description of Tagut, that they love to be worshipped, they love to be praised to such an extent that it reaches the level of worship, that this is incredibly dangerous, and this is what Ibn al-Qayyum made ishara to as far as the Tagut. So the Prophet wasallam's Sunnah is revelation. And it must be followed as it explains the Quran. And as we mentioned before, the statement of Imam Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, where he says, Al Islam huwa sunnah wa sunnatu hi al Islam. That Islam is the sunnah. And the sunnah is Islam. And that you can't have one without the other. Because the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it explains the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he, he came. Uh, to that part of his message, uh, being a messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, and his sunnah is to, was to explain the Qur'an, to explain those verses in the Qur'an that are, are general verses, and to give the details on how to practice Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he does not speak from his desires. Verily it is revelation that was revealed. So that shows us the sunnah is revelation. The Sunnah of who? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also commands us to follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says, and whatever the Messenger came with, uh, follow, and whatever he prohibits you from, you should leave. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says all throughout the Quran that we should follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa'atiyu Allah wa'atiyu Rasul. And follow Allah and follow his Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many, many verses in the Quran which show us the importance of following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the relevance here? The relevance here is that we're talking about legislation, we're talking about uh, uh, the Islamic practices, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that those people who believe that there is a guidance other than his guidance have disbelieved or that there's a guidance equal to his guidance, have disbelieved. Or there's, there's a guidance that is better than his guidance, or a sunnah better than his sunnah, or a system better than his system, or a legislation better than his legislation, then they have disbelieved. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ May Allah protect us from it. This also brings up another very important issue, uh, which is an issue 
very intricately related to what we're talking about. And this is the issue of ruling by other than the divine law, which is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Sunnah and what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed in the Quran. Al uh, Utaybi said, the one who rules by other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's law does not fall into the major disbelief unless he believes the lawful to be unlawful or vice versa or believes in divine law or denies it or prefers secular law to divine law or believes them to be equal or considers what he rules by to be a part of divine law and believes he has the right to rule by other than uh, divine law. So this is those are the situations when a person becomes a uh, disbeliever and we have some some details uh, and we can mention many of the the statements of the ulama unfortunately I don't have them with me some of the statements of some of our ulama of this time and some of the salaf first and foremost the salaf and then the scholars of this time and there are many many statements and um, tafsil or details related to this but we'll just keep it very simple and we mentioned Utaybi's uh, statement which is very comprehensive as he said again the one who rules by other than Allah's law does not fall into the major disbelief so that means there's kufr al-akbar or kufr al-askar kufr al-askar meaning the major kufr which takes a person out of the fold of Islam and the minor kufr which is a major sin nothing we should be happy and pleased oh yeah I've just fallen into the major kufr absolutely not it's a major sin it can lead you take you to the hellfire however it does not expel a person from the fold of Islam so when a person rules by other than divine law it is it entails either one of those two types of disbelief un, un, unless of course uh, there there are other details uh, regarding that but the one who rules by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law does not fall into the major disbelief unless he believes the lawful to be unlawful or vice versa meaning he makes the lawful things un, un, unlawful for example a society we know all over the world they practice uh, uh, interest and interest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he makes war on the person him and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam on the person who uh, involves themselves in taking interest you know this usury and unlawful uh, wealth earnings Allah makes war on them so it's a very serious serious sin it's a major sin in all of the countries in the world they practice interest and they take interest they have the banks they have the uh, uh, and, and it's a part of everyone everyone is included in the world banking system and that's why one of the reasons why we see the major crisis and economic downfall that we see around the world is perhaps partly in uh, attributed to this usury system so the when a ruler legislates makes that an obligation meaning makes it lawful says it is okay we're not saying about allowing it to be practiced in their land allowing it to be practiced this is sinfulness and that's where it's important for us to understand the difference because there are many especially the tekfiris those people who declare tekfir the neo khawarij the neo tekfiris uh, all of these uh, du'at that call the people to the gates of the hellfire that they don't make this distinction instead they say hey the leader has a, a banking system which allows for riba that means he's made it lawful and he is thus a disbeliever this is their logic however the ulama made clear that no this is absolutely batil this is false why because when you make these hukums these rulings of takfir uh, for this you're making a ruling for a person falling into the major sin let's give an example on the micro level for example the man who uh, drinks alcohol is he making that alcohol lawful? He keeps it in his refrigerator, keeps it in his cabinet, his kids see it, they know that he gets drunk or he smokes hashish, whatever it is. 
He's not making that lawful. He is a wicked sinner. He's falling into a major sin by drinking alcohol, which is prohibited and it has a punishment in the Sharia. However, he has not made that lawful. And likewise, the leader who is allowed for those Reba practices to be allowed in his land, and he does have the ability to stop them, but he has not made it lawful. If he says, or if he believes that it is uh, uh, lawful, then this is uh, another mas'ala, this is another issue, and this is where they can fall into ruling by other than what Allah has revealed uh, with and, and believing that their system the unlawful is lawful. This is where you fall into istihlal. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, more in details. I believe we have a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which uh, affirms for us this important principle. So, the main issue that requires explanation, this involves making the lawful things in Islam unlawful by prohibiting them. And this is done when a person believes the lawful to be unlawful and acts in accordance with his desires. This ruling of apostasy also applies to the individual who makes unlawful actions lawful like the person who says fornication is permissible or taking interest is lawful. When these are known to be forbidden acts in Islam. Okay, so that's incredibly important for us uh, to know and, 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 and realize this important detail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or do they have partners with Allah who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not ordained? And this is in Surah Al Shura, uh, in verse, the first verse. Ibn al Kathir said, uh, Ibn Kathir said regarding the above verse, he said, They do not follow what Allah has legislated for you from this straight religion. But instead, they follow what their devils amongst them, the jinn and mankind, have legislated for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they took their rabbis and monks to be their lords besides Allah and the Messiah, son of Maryam, while they were commanded to worship one God alone. None has the right to be worshipped except Him. Praise and glory be to Him. Far removed is He from having the partners they associate with Him. This is in Surah Tawbah, verse 31. So once uh, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger والسلام, was reciting this verse, Adi bin Hatim radiallahu ta'ala anhum said, O Messenger of Allah, they do not worship them, meaning the Jews and the, the, the Christians or the monks, they didn't worship the monks and the rabbis. He said, they do not worship them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, they certainly do. To, and, and in relation to this, it was the meaning is to legislate laws that conflict with divine law is an infringement of Allah's lordship and sole right to legislate. So this is shirk arububiyya. So it shows that where they fell into shirk and where they followed the, the, the main people began, the, the mainstream uh, uh, followers from the people of the book where they went astray and fell into this practice of making the lawful unlawful it's when their rabbis and their monks and priests made unlawful practices lawful and then they followed them in this this is where they worship them this was the uh, worship and the Prophet وسلم, described it as worship as the ibadah meaning that they had committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with uh, and this was shirk and rububiya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship his right to be worshipped alone his right to be the divine uh, that he is the hakam he is the the law giver the sole law legislator and they they took away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right there Abu Ya'la says, whoever believes in the permissibility of something Allah has prohibited by clear evidence or his messenger وسلم, or declared prohibited by consensus of Muslim, then he is a disbeliever. So meaning, whoever believes something which is impermissible to be permissible, which uh, uh, is impermissible by the Quran or the Sunnah or the ijma of the, the consensus of the, the Muslims, then this person has become a disbeliever. Why? Because they've made, they've made the unlawful lawful or the lawful unlawful. And this, again, the, the shahid here that we wanted to mention, the thing we wanted to, men to emphasize here, as Abu Ya'la said, whoever believes 
he mentioned belief. That belief is what we're concerned about when it comes to istihlal. It's not the practice. And this is a rad ala tek, uh, on the tekfiris because they say, hey, the leader has the, the, the bank ribawiya, the, 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 the banks that have usury or interest, so they have become disbelievers. No, it has to do with uh, their belief. Do they believe this is a, a lawful practice just because they have it? It could be out of weakness, it could be out of the pressure of the world system, which is a weakness as well, or whatever the situation is. But however, this is not making it lawful. And this is an incredibly important detail we have to understand. And this is uh, like the person who makes it permissible to drink alcohol and prohibits uh, prayer, for example, fasting and zakat. So, for example, if a person prohibits this in his household, regardless of whether this is the leader for the society or the individual who prohibits it, maybe there are some men who prohibit, if you want to call them men, that they prohibit their wives and their daughters from wearing hijab. Oh, you don't have to wear that. Oh, that's embarrassing us. Oh, what is Bob and Jill going to say? Oh, uh, you know, that, that thing is so hot and it's so, uh, you know, I don't like it. It, it just looks makes you look like this or it makes you look like this and they actually prohibit their wives and their daughters from wearing the hijab or for example they prohibit the prayer I don't want you praying you're praying too much uh, you don't have to fast you don't have to uh, you know do these acts of worship then this person is made the uh, the lawful, unlawful. They have prohibited these things. Wa'iyadu billah min that again. This is a very dangerous practice, which is widespread. It sounds funny, it sounds strange, but I'm sure many of us can identify from this who have family members who have Muslim names, but in fact, they may have left the fold of Islam. Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. Because they prohibit the lawful things. They prohibit the things which are legislated by a law. A law is legislating something, but they're saying, nah, 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 nah. We have something else. We have something that's better. We have something that's equal to. We have something that we're going to change for uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. So this is incredibly important. Likewise, a person who believes something to be unlawful that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have made lawful, permissible by clear textual evidence or the Muslim community has consensus on, and this includes the individual and the leader. And an important detail here, and that the individual has knowledge of its permissibly, permissibility and still prohibits it, then he is a disbeliever. And this is a statement uh, uh, of one of the scholars here. Some of the more contemporary scholars offer additional insight into the issue. Sheikh Salib bin Fozan states, so apostasy is not pronounced on everyone who rules by other than what Allah has revealed. Instead, there are details in this matter between whoever sees that ruling by other than Allah's laws is better or the same as any other law or that there is a choice between ruling by Islamic law or not. Then this one is judged as a disbeliever outside of Islam. This is a statement of Alama bin Fozan Hafizullahu Ta'ala. Bin Baz, the former Mufti, uh, head scholar of Saudi Arabia, described Rahmatullah described the one who does not rule by Allah's law as being a disbeliever if he believes the common law he uses to be better than divine law. Likewise, the one who believes it uh, permissible to rule by another law apart from Islamic law is also a disbeliever if in, even if he believes Islamic law is better however Bin Baz held that the one who rules from his desires or out of fear making judgments to please others based on bribery or for some other reason is a major sinner still in the fold of Islam so that's an important detail that we have to understand in addition Bin Baz made a condition that this ruler knows he is disobedient to Allah and that it is obligatory upon him to rule by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law al wadi Imam al wadi Allah yarhamahu, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al wadi rahmatullah alayhi, he said, another, who is another contemporary scholar of hadith, said, if someone makes permissible what Allah has made unlawful, and he is knowledgeable of what he does, and he is not forced, then he disbelieved. 
then he disbelieves. Whoever makes judgments due to bribery has not become a disbeliever, but he has committed a major sin. So that's the statement of Sheikh Muqbil Rahmatullah An important detail regarding the issue of decreeing something lawful to be unlawful is the fact that it has to do with one's belief, as we mentioned. Ibn al-Qayyim said, then the issue of making something lawful is doing something, believing it to be lawful. Again, the shahid, believing it to be lawful. This illustrates the difference between Ahl Sunnah and the Khawarij and the contemporary takfiris who believe that recurrent sinfulness is making a transgression permissible. They believe that, the more, that if you sin regularly, the person who watches pornography regularly, person who drinks alcohol regularly, person who commits adultery every day, that they have made it permissible. But this is a mistake. This is not the case. Thus, exp so the, again, let's read this statement. Ahl Sunnah, uh, this illustrates the difference between Ahl Sunnah and the Khawarij and the contemporary Takfiris who believe that recurrent sinfulness is making a transgression, a transgression permissible, thus expelling the one who is persistent in sin from the religion. Al Utaybi said, No one from the early scholars understood repetition of sin to be istihlal. And if they had, they would have established this understanding before us. A beautiful, beautiful statement that needs to be read again. This is a statement of Al Utaybi. Uh, after looking at the, the, the text of the classical scholars and, and, and in our studies, this is also the conclusion that we've come across and what our ulama have, uh, um, have um, constantly uh, drilled into us. And again, this important distinction between Ahlul Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah holds this belief. Al Utaybi said, No one from the early scholars, meaning the Salaf, Salaf Salih, understood that repetition of sin, meaning to be continually involved in a sin, is making it lawful. So that means, let's, let's talk about this. That means a person drinking alcohol. That means a person committing adultery. The person watching pornography. The person uh, uh, smoking weed, smoking hashish, uh, cocaine, whatever they're doing, doing it regularly. That does not make them a disbeliever. That is mean they're doing a major sin. That's incredibly important important to realize. In the law, Allah doesn't forgive uh, that you commit shirk uh, if you die upon it. But He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Letting us know that the other sins, the other sins, uh, regardless, the major sins or minor sins, they're forgivable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you die upon it even. And so, the person who does not, who, who, who commits a regular sin, a major sin even, that's regular, or a minor sin that's regular, does not, uh, is not making it lawful. Unless they believe, as we, the statement of Ibn al-Qayyum, where he said, then the issue of making something lawful is doing something, believing it to be lawful. And the, and the shahid here is believing it to be lawful. Uh, and this is the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and with that we've completed the fourth nullifier of Islam in a very brief, with a very brief explanation and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam